Hi, this is the second in a series about comparing a doublet with a dipole. If you haven't seen part one, which was all about the doublet, uh, please follow the link above. And at the end of that video, you'll see a link to come back here so you won't miss out. In this part two, uh, I install an 80 meter dipole and do some comparisons. But before we get started with the dipole, I had a bit of feedback to the first video on the doublet uh, and suggestions about connecting the antenna different ways. Here I've used a different choke. I also tried connecting the ladder line direct into the tuner. Neither method made any spectacular difference to what I'd already experienced using the one-to-one -one ballon and the tuner uh, into the transceiver. Uh, so I continued on with my uh, dipole experiments. And this dipole will have a ballon at the top and to avoid the need for a box which will be extra weight and wind loading uh, I've gone for this T section which is cut out of a, an 8mm thick chopping board. So as per one of my recent videos I've made another one to one uh, ballon on type 31 ferrite. Uh, don't be fooled by the red and black wire, this isn't 12 volt DC wire, this is PTFE high temperature wire. And here you can see I've drilled the T-piece to take some thimbles on the end to take the strain of the wire and also some bolts and connectors for the uh, wire connection. And here you can see I've put two holes in the centre to cable tie the ferrite in place. I've put two further holes on the top of the T for a potential future 40 element fan dipole. And here on the bottom you can see I've used a bit of angle aluminium to hold the SO239. And the wire I'm using is a DX Commander DX50, uh, which is a Kevlar cord copper stranded wire. And to keep the moisture out, the connections have all had liberal coating of liquid rubber and the PL259 will eventually be sealed with self-amalgamating tape and electrician's tape. So we're just down the bottom of the garden. Uh, this is the counterweight. So we just need to undo this. And then pull down the, the doublet. It doesn't weigh much. So here we are with the dipole up for the first time. I cut it long at 41 metres, so I'm guessing this first test will be low. And here you can see the dip uh, in SWR is about 3.4 megahertz thereabouts. So I won't explain this in detail, so you can either pause or come back to this point, but this is a formula you can use to decide how much to cut off. When trimming a dipole, I was uh, conservative in my trims. So with 1.2 metres off both ends, the dip is now about 3.6, so it just needs to be a little bit shorter. So this is the second fall back, um, took another 40 centimetres off. I'm uh, making sure each time I'm going to measure uh, the way it goes to the dog bone, so I know that fall back is 15 each time. So one side to do.
and the rig was reading a little bit lower than the analyzer so I tried the external SWR meter uh, and that actually matched the analyzer. So the screen of receive is the dipole and then I switch over to the vertical and you can see uh, there's less less strength in signals and a little bit more noise uh, which you'd expect this is the afternoon so 80 is not not brilliant and this is back on the dipole again And if you remember from the video one, uh, I was really after an 80 meter antenna and possibly a 40. Any resonant bands would be a bonus. Uh, I had to borrow a, a tuner to try out the doublet. Uh, the doublet looks like a good multi-band antenna if it's the only antenna you've got. Uh, I've got bands covered by other antennas in the garden, so uh, I don't really need those higher bands covering. Uh, so I'm going to stick with the 80 meter dipole and possibly add a 40 meter element too. If you like the video, you'll like the others on this channel, I'm sure. If you consider subscribing, hit the bell. Uh, you'll be notified of videos. And subscribing to channels on YouTube is free. Hope you enjoyed this one.